Hello and welcome to the part of the learning module, How Citrus Grows in Florida. My name is Asia Palillo and I am a citrus extension agent serving DeSoto, Hardy, and Manatee counties. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about citrus and how we grow it here in the state of Florida. First, we're going to discuss the different growing regions in the state of Florida. We have five growing regions that consist of the northern, the western, the southern, the central, and the Indian River District. Each of these different regions has different soil types, which must be taken into consideration when we're looking at drainage needs and other production practices. Different types of fruit are grown in the different regions. For example, the Indian River District grows the majority of our grapefruit that we grow here in the state of Florida. The other growing regions consist mainly of juice oranges, but there are some fresh, and we also do grow grapefruit in other parts of the state. The western region, which is where my counties are, has flatwood soil, which generally is not very well drained and requires some artificial draining techniques, which is very different from the central growing region, which is on the ridge of Florida and has deep sandy soils. Next, we're going to discuss the parts of the citrus tree. Citrus trees that are grown in Florida consist of two parts, the scion, which is the top part of the tree. That's going to be the variety that you eat. And then the rootstock, which is the bottom part of the tree. We utilize this technique, which we call grafting, and you can see in the photo down below, the magnified portion there with the arrow, that's the graft or bud union. That's where these two parts of the tree are grafted together in the citrus nursery. The reason we do this is because different rootstocks are more well suited for the different areas in Florida, such as soil type, drainage needs, salinity or pH, and other different factors that we utilize. So by grafting this tree, we cut down on juvenility, which also allows the tree to come into bearing much sooner than it would had it been a seedling tree grown from seed. So typically it takes a citrus tree about three to five years to bear fruit. It's important to note that trees can only be grafted in the state of Florida in registered citrus nurseries. This is very important to limit the spread of diseases throughout our state. So if anybody ever asks you, no, they cannot graft their own tree. It can only be done in citrus nurseries. The next topic we're going to talk about is growing citrus in the harvest timeline. Citrus grows on the tree throughout the year. In February through March, that time period is when we see our main bloom period on our citrus trees. The white flower that you see up in the corner, that is what a typical citrus bloom is going to look like. Trees can experience other bloom periods, which we call off blooms, in June, around that time period, and then they can also experience it in the winter, and this is usually mainly due to disease pressure or other pressures um, that the tree is experiencing. Citrus fruit matures between October and June, depending on the variety. We categorize our different citrus varieties by early, mid-season, and late. So early varieties are gonna be those that are gonna be ready around October through roughly December. Mid-seasons are gonna be December to about March or April, and then late is going to be anything after that that is harvested. In order to be harvested, fruit must meet certain state quality requirements that are put in place by both the juice processing plant and the packing houses for fresh fruit. So let's talk a little bit about citrus varieties. I know I mentioned the early, the mid-season, and the late. Well, what we mainly grow here in the state are gonna be sweet oranges. We have Hamlin's, which is one of our early varieties. Valencia's, which is one of our late varieties, and navel, which is an early variety, but is only used for fresh fruit, where Hamlin and Valencia are our two main juice varieties. Next is grapefruit, where the majority of that does grow in the Indian River District, which I mentioned before. We do have a few different varieties of that, marsh, or ruby red, or flame, and of course that corresponds to the color of the flesh inside. We also grow specialty fruit varieties here in the state. 
We do have some limes and lemons, uh, but we do grow a large variety of mandarins, tangerines, and hybrids. Moving on to how we grow our citrus tree throughout the year and how we care for it, fertilization is of course very important. The tree needs proper nutrients to grow, to bloom, and to set fruit. So we have our macronutrients that we know we find, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. We also have our micronutrients, iron, copper, zinc, manganese, boron, and molybdenum. All of these are equally important to the tree. Different fertilizer formulations are available. I have a couple listed down here. We have got liquid fertilizer, which would be applied to the soil. We have dry granular fertilizer, which also is applied to the soil, but typically needs moisture to activate it. So that would be something you would wet into the soil or wait for a rain event. And then we have foliar spray. We typically use that to correct micronutrient deficiencies such as zinc and manganese because the foliar spray allows that nutrient to go directly to the leaves where it's needed. Next is irrigation. Again, just like fertilization, irrigation is something that the tree absolutely needs. We have very rainy periods during the year, but then we also have very dry periods. So we want to make sure that we are watering any newly established trees twice a week from March to June in that drier part of the season, about one to two gallons each time. In the rainy season, we're going to water trees as needed so that we don't saturate the soil. But we also don't want those trees to become wilted. So just check and make sure that the soil isn't really dry and needs irrigation. Next we're going to touch on a few pests and diseases that occur in citrus. We actually do have quite a lot due to our environment. The first insect we're going to talk about is the Asian citrus psyllid. It's the vector for the bacteria that causes huang Wang bing or also called citrus greening. And what that means is this insect carries that bacteria in its gut and as it's feeding on a tree it can both acquire the disease as well as transmit the disease. The female likes to lay eggs on the small new flush that grows, as you can see in that picture there with the eggs and the nymphs, that's very tender new flush. There are multiple generations that occur throughout the year. There are several nymphal stages that you can see there, the little yellow insect with the red eyes and the wax secretion, and then there's the adult which has wings and flies from tree to tree. Huang Wang Bing, which is also referred to as HLB or citrus greening, is endemic in the state. It causes the tree to be very unhealthy. It also causes the fruit to be lopsided, which you can see in those photos below. It causes a discoloration of the leaves, which we call blotchy model. Ultimately, it will lead to the tree's death because the nutrients and water cannot be translocated throughout the tree to the different growing areas, such as the leaves or the fruit, the way it's supposed to be. So the tree becomes unhealthy and cannot sustain itself. It also suffers a large amount of root loss depending on the severity of the disease in the tree. The picture up in the right hand corner, that is an individual plant cover and that is how we're managing HLB at the moment with our new trees. That netting physically excludes the Asian citrus psyllid from landing on the tree, thereby preventing it from inoculating the tree with the bacteria. Citrus canker is the next disease I wanted to give you some information on. It's a bacterial disease that's spread through wind-driven rain. It can also be spread on clothing, on people, on equipment. Um, it is unfortunately endemic in the state as well. It causes lesions that can occur on the fruit, which you can see there, uh, on the leaves, which is also shown there, and also on the stems. It varies in how severe the lesions are depending on temperature, depending on the amount of bacteria that's present. I have a picture down below of leaf miner damage, and the reason I show this is because leaf miner is a small moth which the larva actually mines a tunnel through the layers of the leaf, creating a wound. And many times you may be able to see canker lesions dotted along those mine trails if canker is present on the tree. 
Now, canker does not affect the internal quality of the fruit. It only affects the outside appearance. I wanted to mention a few other pests that are very common in citrus that you may find if you're looking at different citrus trees. Citrus rust mite is a very small mite which causes this discoloration on the fruit. It also doesn't affect the internal quality of the fruit, so it's really just an appearance issue on the outside. Katydid is shown here, and it makes damage much like a grasshopper would. They have chewing mouth parts, so they're going to chew the leaves, and if they get on a very young tree, they could destroy a lot of the foliage on that tree. The two-spotted mite is another mite that you may find on the tree. They're very common to find on the under, underside of the leaves and they create like a webbing and they can also create like a scratchy appearance on the leaf itself. The orange dog is another interesting insect that we have here in citrus. As you can see down there, the caterpillar stage of this insect looks like bird droppings. That's its camouflage. It does grow into this beautiful zebra swallowtail butterfly. However, if you do have the caterpillar stage on your citrus tree, it loves to eat leaves and it will seriously defoliate a citrus tree, especially a young one, if you have them. Up in the top right hand corner, we've got aphids. Those are very, very common in citrus. These here that are shown are black aphids. You can see the different life stages on, on the branch and then the photo to the left of it, that's the damage. So if you see the damage with curled leaves like that, you most likely have aphids. I have a few of the most common deficiencies that you would find on citrus shown here. We have iron, zinc, nitrogen, and magnesium. They all have very different symptoms that you can see on the leaves. However, a lot of times, more than one nutritional deficiency can be present on a leaf along with the blotchy model that could be present from HLB. So it's important to know what you're dealing with and what nutrients your tree actually needs. That's why it's important to do leaf samples and send those to a lab and you can get a nutritional analysis of the tree and what it's going to need as far as fertilizer. I hope you've enjoyed this portion of the learning module, how to grow citrus in Florida. Citrus is one of our signature commodities here in the state and it's very important to our economic growth and stability here in the state. Many jobs are involved in the citrus industry and we hope that we can keep our industry strong. If you have any questions about anything that you may find on a citrus tree, please don't hesitate to reach out to the citrus agents or any of the research and education centers that you can find here in the state of Florida. Thank you.